Professor Chu, thank you so much for joining us. It's really an honor. I wanted to ask you a more general question. You've held many distinguished roles in academia and at Bell Labs and in government, and I was wondering if you would mind either comparing and contrasting your experiences in those roles or what lessons as a scientist have helped you um, in your leadership roles and what have you taken most recently uh, from your position in government now uh, back to the lab? Well, first, uh, they're very different jobs. Uh, I always regarded my job uh, as a professor, my job as a uh, teacher uh, and a researcher as not a job. Mm -hmm. And during the time I was uh, doing research at Bell Labs and uh, a professor at Stanford and Berkeley, uh, I never took very long vacations. I mean, the longest mm -hmm. vacation might be two or three days. Um, when I was working in the Department of Energy for the first time in the, my memory, I began to take one-week vacations every year. <laughs> Uh, so they are very different jobs. Uh, I have no regrets about taking the job as Secretary of Energy mm -hmm. because of my concern about energy and climate change. And I felt that uh, as a practicing scientist, I could come in and attract many more people like me who would never think of working in government mm -hmm. to come in and help. And the message was simple. I would get on the phone and say, come join me. Uh, we are here to help save the world. Good message. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple uh, because if we could uh, invest in things that would lead to better technologies and to help uh, expedite those technologies, get them deployed, uh, economic solutions to clean energy, uh, that will go immensely to helping decrease our carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. The jobs are very different. There's a lot of theater I discovered in the public mm -hmm. job in the sense that uh, sometimes what happens in front of the TV camera is because it's happening in front of a TV camera. I see. <laughs> uh, and uh, usually when you're teaching a class or you're working with students or you're doing research with your graduate students and postdocs, it's not about that. It's about learning. It's about discovery. It's about other things. And so uh, it's, they're very, very different jobs. But in answer to you uh, several questions, I, yeah. the answer to what did I learn uh, from my time in public service, um, I think I had a deeper appreciation for what it takes beyond just science and technology to, to get things out into the marketplace, mm -hmm. to actually get them deployed and uh, embraced and accepted. It's, a lot of it is about economics, it's about the money, how much do things cost. But there's also other things, uh, you know, natural resistance to change, uh, things of that. And there's also um, uh, what I would call uh, out there, uh, there are companies who don't want things changed because their livelihood depends on the status quo and they, mm -hmm. of course, understandably will fight to maintain status quo while uh, other new innovative companies who don't, aren't part of the status quo, of course, want change. So, so I had a much deeper appreciation of the pulls and tugs. Um, and on top of that, always with my feeling that although we don't know what will happen with climate change, to me, the risks are very large. Uh, you don't have to be sure, uh, even 80 or 90 percent sure that things uh, bad will happen but you, you should move in that direction just for the sake, not only of us in my generation, but mostly mm -hmm. for the next generations. Um, and so um, I should end by saying, having to explain things to people in Congress made me a better teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, taught two freshman seminars and I, uh, just, I found out how to bring it down into uh, uh, an explainable intuitive level without and it's not, uh, I mean, it's perhaps not really seriously tongue-in-cheek, but, but to explain the truth in a simple way, but we're still very true. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that helped me. Thank you.